Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the box model. Our objectives for this video are that you will understand the box model as well as be able to modify margin, border, and padding in order to properly position elements. So I'm just going to read straight from the MDN docs. The box model. In a document each element is represented as a rectangular box. In CSS each of these rectangular boxes is described using the standard box model. Every box is composed of four parts or areas defined by their respective edges. The content edge, padding edge, border edge, and margin edge. By Mark Twain, because apparently he said every single quote on the internet ever. This is actually from the MDN documentation. So to give you a picture of this, every piece of content, every element on an HTML page is a box. It's a rectangle. Even if it looks like a circle or it looks like a squiggly line, they're all rectangles. So there are four parts to each element. There's the content, which is inside. So if this might be the picture, this might be the text, whatever is inside, there's the edge of that. Then immediately outside of that, you have padding. This white space right here is padding. That's the space between the content and the border. So, because immediately outside the padding is the border. Whether the border has any thickness or not is based on your CSS. So remember, if you don't give it a border, the border has zero thickness. It's still there, but it has zero thickness, so it doesn't take up any space. But if you give it a border, then this little blue, light blue area is represents that border. And then finally, you have the margin, which is space outside of the border between this element and any other element. So each element has four things, got the content, the padding, the border, and the margin. Starting on the inside, I'm working out in that order. So now that we understand the box model on kind of a theoretical level, let's look at it in a way that we can interact with it so you can kind of get a better understanding. I have here an HTML file that's just an H1 and a P tag. And that's all there is to it, there's nothing else there. So what we can do is we can manipulate these four aspects in order to place the content where we want in order to kind of move it around and resize it. So first off you've got the content area, that's the area that takes up, is taken up by the content. So if I go to the paragraph, the content down, if you scroll down to the very bottom on the styles, the content area is right there. You can mouse over this and it'll show you where each of these are. Right now the content is 1104 pixels wide, that's just because it's the entirety of the page. If I make the page smaller, now it's 980 wide. So the content right now is going all the way across, but we can set the width and change that. So if I pull this up and select my P tag and set the width to 400 pixels, for example, refresh the page, now it's just 400 pixels. So you see that it stops there. You can change the, pick the width to 50% and refresh the page. Scroll down, you can see that it's 551.667 pixels. And if you move this over, you can see it changes, 454. So if you use percentages, it'll remain there. You can use pixels if you want it to be a constant size. The next area is padding. Right now, there is zero padding around this. You can see that because it has a little dash and there's no padding anywhere around this. But we can add padding. So let's copy this and put it inside here so we can see it more easily. And the padding is pretty simple, this padding, and you can give it, I don't know, 20 pixels, we'll say. 20 pixels of padding, refresh, and look at that, it moved down and over. The reason it did that is because the padding took up that space. There wasn't any before, now there is. If I, I can toggle that off if I want, and it moves it back over there, toggle it on, and it moves it back over there. You can add padding just like the border by giving it to the top, bottom, left, or right. So you can do padding left, 10 pixels, padding right, uh, top, whatever, 100 pixels. And if we do anything right and bottom, it won't matter because we don't have any other elements. So refresh. Now we've got specific paddings. We've got padding top 100, and we have padding left of 10. And again, we can toggle that off and on here just to see what it looks like. So padding is the L, and then let's add a border to it. Move this, actually I'm going to move this all the way to the bottom. So the border area, so let's do a border solid 
grid one pixel. Right now, this is a one pixel border. So if you look at our thing, our border is only one pixel wide. If we make it 10 pixels, and refresh, notice how the font, the content moves. The border takes up space. The border is not overlaid on top of other things. It takes up its own space. And then finally you have the margin, which is the stuff all the way around it. Now look right here. By default, we have 16 margin of 16 pixels on top and bottom, but nothing on left and right. It still takes up the whole space over here simply because there's nothing else there. So it looks like it's taking up all that space in um, these console tools, but there's actually nothing there. So if we had another element, we could stick it over here without any problems. So margin is set the exact same way. Margin, we'll make it 25 pixels. And margin again is the area between this element and other elements. So margin is 25 all the way around. Off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. That's the box model. There are shortcuts to doing this for the margin. Um, just like kind of the, the border, you could do 10px, 30px, and if you'll notice what that will do is that will set 10 top and bottom, 30 left and right. So top and bottom, left and right, or you could do top, right, bottom, left. That's just kind of a shortcut if you need to set each one individually. You can do the same thing with padding. Um, Hunter, instead of doing padding left, padding top, you could do padding 20 pixels, 40 pixels, 90 pixels, 10 pixels. And you've got that padding right there. 20, 40, 90, 10. That is the box model. This is something that will come up over and over and over and over again whenever you're positioning elements in CSS. Um, so really you should get to know it. One trick that I wanted to show, I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. Set the width to 50%. So right now, this is going to be all the way over there. But there is a trick that you can use with your margins in order to center things horizontally. You set margin, zero, and auto. What this will do is this will set the margin on the top and bottom to zero, and left and right to automatic, and it will center it so notice it zeroes the entire element, not just the text in that. If you wanted to center the text as well, you would have to use um, text align. So if I came up here and added an element, text align center, now it's centered. Because the text align centers it within that element. So that's just, just one more trick. Margin zero auto will horizontally center an element on the page. And that's it for the box model for right now. As, I'm, as I said, this is a, a concept that will come up over and over again. You're not probably really going to understand it all that well until you start building things with it and get your hands dirty. This is kind of an introduction to it to get you the foundation, and then we're going to build on that as you actually do stuff. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.